Soup season is here. May not feel like it all the time. It's starting to feel like it a bit in the mornings here. Maybe you're not there yet. Maybe you're well into it, but we are gonna stock your pantries with some soup today. Welcome to Garden Preserve. I'm Carter. I'm so glad you're here today. It's gonna be a fun one. We're gonna put some soup on the shelf. Let's go. So today what we're doing is what I'm calling a soup sampler. So let's talk about what I'm doing today. This is chicken corn chowder. Now, I love this recipe. This is my recipe. My son, this is his very favorite, absolute favorite. Okay, so you can see in here we have potatoes and corn and jalapenos and chicken and broth. There are no thickeners in here. There's no cream in here. There's no, there's none of that stuff in here. And frankly, you know, you can add it when you open the door, but I don't because it's so thick and chunky with all of the yummy stuff in it. And I'll explain to you how that is as we go along. Okay, so chicken corn chowder is on our list today. This is chipotle chicken. This one has corn and peppers and onions and chipotle and adobo sauce and chicken in it. And you know, chicken, when you can cook chicken, when you can chicken at all, quite frankly, but when you can chicken in broth, it gets to be very dry. I know that seems backwards, but it does. It gets very dry. So I will show you my trick when I'm doing soups of how I get around that. And it's, it's still, you know, it's still chicken canned in broth, but it is so much better than doing it any other way. The next one is chipotle beef. So it has all the same ingredients as the chipotle chicken, except it has beef instead. This is a raw pack, super easy. We're gonna talk about a couple of different ways to do that today. And a couple of key things you need to keep in mind because it is a raw pack of beef. This is beef stew. Again, it's a raw pack. It doesn't make the most beautiful jar once it's been canned, but it has potatoes and onions and carrots and beef in there. And it is delicious, absolutely delicious. So we're gonna do two pints of each. That'll give you a chance to sample which ones you like. So what I look for in a soup, particularly in my house, is something that is a grab and it's done kind of thing. So for instance, David, he likes chicken anything, right? I usually go for beef anything. This way I'm not making a big pot of one thing and somebody's not as happy as the other person is. He can have what he wants or he can have it when he gets in from playing golf or he can have it for a snack, or, you know, whatever. That makes my life so much easier if I don't have to stop and cook or open up a big quart size jar and end up putting half of it in the fridge. Now, if your life is such that doing these in quarts is easier for you, makes your life easier, by all means, this is about you, not about me, it's about you. So I'm doing two pints of each. So if you'd rather do four quarts instead of eight pints, all you're gonna do is combine all the ingredients times two for the chipotle chicken. And you just put that in a quart and then you're gonna time yours for 90 minutes instead of 75. So we'll talk about that as we go through. But truly, I want this to be a way for you to sample different soups and decide what best suits you in your pantry. If you're not gonna eat beef stew and chicken corn chowder because of the carbs in the potatoes, well, you know, maybe college age kids or something take these two and then you decide to do double batches of these next time. And these, by the way, if anyone is watching their carbs, I did do a net on it and it is net 10 carbs in each of these. So if that fits into a low carb lifestyle for you, it does for us, that's perfect. I actually did 16 more of these yesterday. Um, and these, as good as they are, they are too tempting for me to keep around. So they will be going home with my son at Thanksgiving when he comes. So he's gonna be very excited given that this is his favorite. Okay, so while I'm getting set up, I'm gonna send you to take a look at some footage of when I did the taste test, the initial taste test on these. After I marked up my recipes, I made a batch, I tasted everything, went through it, looked at the consistency of it, looked at the ratio of corn to potatoes to peppers to, to whatever, right? And got it the way I like it, but you can see it in the bowl. 
see how it looks coming right out of the jar. I mean, right out of the jar. And in this view, I'm going to give you, I didn't add thickeners to any of them. I personally don't add thickeners to any of these at all. You know, I mean, even like the beef stew, you would think you would want a thick gravy and you can do a roux, you could add whatever after you can it, you know, when you're going to serve it, you can do all that. But I, this is so chunky. I just don't, you know, you may not need it. We'll see. This one, you can also, you, when it comes out of the jar, you can put some cream in there, coconut milk, whatever. Again, I don't need it because it's such a chunky, hearty, well, maybe it's not chowder without cream, but chicken corn chowder. <laughs> That's what I'm calling it. So the way I structured this today, it really is a soup sample package. So, you know, without all of my side markings here, you'll see down below, these are the ingredients you need to do, two pints of each of these soups. And then if you go back, say you only wanna do chicken corn chowder and beef stew. This is what goes in one pint of chicken corn chowder. This is what goes in one pint of beef stew. If you wanna do six pints of beef stew, you just multiply all of these by six. If you want to do one quart of beef stew, multiply by two, okay? That makes sense? Before we get into all the chopping today, let me introduce you to my new knife. It is the best knife I have ever had. In, my, in fact, I'm pretty convinced I've never had a real knife. So we'll just, we'll just start from there. This is from Nakano, the manufacturer of the knife. They are in Seiki, Japan. Which, if you don't know anything about Seiki, Japan, it's really the birthplace of the samurai sword. So they have generations and generations and generations of swordsmiths passing down the tradition of making beautiful swords and knives. The type of knife is called santoku. It's basically an all-purpose chef knife is what we would call it for vegetables, meats, fish, whatever you want to use it for. This one is stunning. This one is perfectly weighted. I mean, perfectly weighted. <laughs> It just, it makes everything else in my knife drawer a joke. So it has an olive wood handle, high carbon stainless steel blade. It's the perfect length, has a perfect slant on the bottom or curve to the bottom, I should say. It is so sharp. The first thing I cut with it was a tomato. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a terrible story. In my house, the only knife I have that will cut a tomato, even after I sharpen it, for a good long time is a steak knife. <laughs> That's terrible. Oh my gosh, I had no idea, honestly, what I was missing. This knife has changed my, my cooking life for sure. <laughs> so I want to thank Nakano so much for sending me this knife. They have also given me a discount code for you to use that is Grow and Preserve, all capital letters, all one word. I'll put the link down below. I'll also put the code again down below. It'll give you 10% off. They run sales every now and then. They have bundles. This can come in a bundle. I don't know if this one is sold separately, but they're not anywhere near as expensive as I thought they were going to be when I first used this knife. So I hope that you will take a look at those. And 
enjoy. Buy yourself a new knife. Heaven knows you probably need it. Maybe you don't need it as badly as I did, but you probably need it. All right, let's get on to chopping. The first thing I'm going to start with is the potatoes. We need about two cups of diced potatoes for this. I am using some homegrown potatoes. These are little gold potatoes. They're my favorite to use in canning projects. Red potatoes would work well. White potatoes can be a little starchy. So you might want to soak them in the water a little bit longer. I am going to soak them in water while I do everything else to get out some of that starch because I don't want my soup to be cloudy. So last night I took some frozen tomatoes out of the freezer and I just let them defrost and I'm just kind of squeezing them out of their skins and then I'm going to dice them up. I have all of the amounts down below so I'm not going to bother to go through all of that but I do want you to see what I'm doing. So these are basically peeled and diced tomatoes. If you'd rather just use regular diced tomatoes, if you want to use some previously canned tomatoes, all of that is just fine too. And then we're going to move on to the bell peppers. Now I'm going to use a red bell pepper and part of an orange bell pepper. It takes about one and a half to get to two cups. And I'm just using those colors, one, because I had them, two, because I have green jalapenos and yellow corn in the jar. So I like the difference in, in the colors, but that is user preference, so feel free to use exactly what you have. Now I'm going to take the seeds and the pith out of the jalapeno peppers. They're just there to add really a little bit of something else, not massive amounts of heat, and I don't want seeds floating around in my soup. So this is just the easiest way I found to do it. I want these in small dices, so I get a little bit of jalapeno in every bite. Next comes an onion. We want two cups of diced onion. Ends up being about one full large onion. I had a little bit of extra onion left in the fridge, but I didn't end up needing it. So it just depends on the size of your onion, but about two cups is pretty good for this. Be sure to hang on to any extra you have just in case anything falls short or you have a little extra room to fill up. Now in the original beef stew, I felt like there was too much carrot. So I did cut the carrot down just a little bit to a third of a cup. Now here's my secret for making better tasting chicken inside a soup. I use rotisserie chicken, or you can certainly bake your own. But I think that whatever happens when you bake a chicken on the bone with the skin, leaves it in a much better position to handle what happens to it when you can it. So it comes out much less dry as far as I'm concerned. This was a Costco chicken. I used both breasts, both thighs. I didn't use the leg meat here, one, because David always claims the leg meat. You know, I can bring a rotisserie chicken home for dinner, and by the time I go to serve it, it's missing both its legs. So that's just the way it happens in my house. But I had plenty with just the two breasts and the two thighs. And you'll notice that I'm cutting them in very large chunks. It's, it's all going to shred when you put it in the bowl or put it in the pot to cook. So don't worry about the size of what you're cutting. Keep it big. Now we're moving on to chuck roast. I would prefer stew beef in this because I don't have to do all the cutting. I don't have to deal with all the fat. I don't have to deal with all of the connective tissue in there. So you end up cutting away a lot of what you paid for uh, when you have a chuck roast. But it does work. But if you can get stew beef do it. We're going to need about a pound and a quarter, give or take. This probably started out at almost two pounds, and I used almost all of it in this. There were just a couple little bites left that I ended up giving to uh, the dog. And you'll notice I'm leaving these in large bites as well. When I get the stew beef, those come in big, like two-inch chunks, and that's what you saw you know, earlier in the pictures of the soup, and I did not change it at all. Okay, let's get packing our jars. This is where it's just, it's so simple. Once you've done all the chopping, it is so simple. Let's talk quickly about how we're gonna pack the jars. I am not using the USDA soup guidelines. So I don't have to use the USDA method on how to pack a jar for soup. I'm not using their timing. With the USDA, with their soup, it's 50% broth and 50% stuff, which means you just have little bits floating around. <laughs> 
in your soup. And that's, that's fine if you intend to add noodles to it when you go to serve it or add rice to it when you go to serve it. I don't on most of my soups. Now I will make some chicken soup, just plain old chicken soup, and fill it half full with chicken and the rest with broth for those days when somebody gets sick and they want it with some rice or some pasta or something. And that's absolutely perfect for that. But for a good hearty lunch, whether you're just grabbing it on the go, you're taking it to work, you're sending a kid to school or to a job, or you're just too tired to make rice, whatever, you want a good hearty meal. So we're doing the hearty version today. So we're gonna use meat canning times, not soup canning times. So we don't have to worry about those soup guidelines of only filling it half full with the good stuff, right? So we're gonna go ahead and fill it full, but we are going to process according to meat processing times. So these pints will go for 75 minutes in a pressure canner. Quartz, if you decide to do that instead, will go for 90 minutes in a pressure canner. All right, let's get going. I have all my measuring cups out, all my food. We're gonna do two thirds of a cup of chicken these are going to be my two chicken jars. These will be my two beef jars. So I want a mix of white and dark meat. This is a, ooh, this is a half. Well, that's okay. We'll go a little over here. And we're just basically going to end up dividing this chicken out. Okay, we're going to call that two thirds of a cup. Into the jar that goes. If I have any leftover, because my measuring tool is is off kilter here, we will divide it. So two thirds of a cup in the next one. So both of our chicken recipes use two thirds of a cup. And again, I'm trying to get a mix of light and dark meat. Toss it in. And you could technically just divide, if you have measured while you were cutting, just divide that among the four jars and you'll be fine. It's more for effect than anything else. Okay, that's it. I'm just gonna divide the rest. I think these first two got a little bit slighted. All right, let's go over and do the beef. Now, as I mentioned before, this is uh, chuck roast that I cut up and there is still there is still lots of fat in it and that's what's going to come back and bite you <laughs> when you go to can it so when we fill these jars we can put our solids up to you know maybe one and a quarter inch headspace but we're only going to put our liquid up to one and a half kind of a generous one and a half because this will let off not only the normal beef juices but also the fat and that's what'll bubble up and it may not prevent it from sealing, but it will make a mess. <laughs> Ask me how I know that. It will make a mess in your canner and you will have jars to wipe down. So I did have that happen yesterday when I used, um, when I used the chuck roast. So anyway, everything's sealed, everything is absolutely fine. But I did have one, one jar that was not happy with my headspace. So I'm gonna put these Let's see, I am going to try to measure these a bit. I'm going for two thirds of a cup as well on these. So this is a one cup measurement this time. Let's see if that works a little bit better for me. Okay, we'll call that two thirds. I did not cut these into tiny little chunks. I just don't feel the need to, to bother with that. It's enough of a pain to cut out all the meat if you're dealing with chuck roast. But even when I use stew beef, which I've, I've used on previous versions, and stew beef is the one you saw in the little clips of, um, of the soup itself after it was canned, that I didn't bother putting those into smaller pieces either. And as you can see, it just fell right apart in the pot. Okay. Yeah, 
getting all the prep work done and settled is so much easier than to take a little break, <laughs> maybe have a cup of coffee, and it just makes everything go so much smoother. All right, so I'm gonna wash my hands from the raw meat, and then we're gonna get on to the vegetables. All right, so here's where the little individual pint jar ingredients list is gonna come in handy for you. Let's do our chipotle, no, let's do our beef stew. One teaspoon of steak seasoning to each of these two jars. This is only for the beef stew. The others get seasoned separately. All right, those are my two beef stew. And I'm gonna add half of my third of a cup of diced carrots or a sixth of a cup. If you like more carrots, feel free to add more. David won't eat cooked carrots. I'm not a massive fan, but they're in there and we're good. All right, I'm gonna drain my potatoes. This will be ready to go in just a second. I'm gonna do tomato. I have two tablespoons of peeled and diced tomatoes in these. onion in each of these. Got some jumpers here. I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of thyme to each of these. And now let's add our potatoes. And we're gonna do half a cup in each of these two jars. Whoops, where's my funnel? So if you have any left, we can just divide them out at the end. You know, sometimes just based on the way you cut them, measurements are gonna differ. All right, so unless we go back and add some more of anything, those two are done. Let's do the, well, we have the potatoes going. Let's do the chicken corn chowder. So to that one, I'm gonna add, let's see, ooh, one tablespoon of diced and seeded jalapenos. This makes all the difference in a chicken corn chowder. So don't leave it out. This one. And if I weren't giving instructions on each of these individually, I would just be doing them all. So just do them all as an assembly line. It goes a little bit faster, but I think this is easier for people to keep track of this way. And diced onions, quarter cup. spilling onions all over the place. Okay. And a quarter cup of corn kernels. Go ahead and get those done as well. Half a cup of diced potatoes. We're gonna have to squish this down a little bit to get a half cup in. Okay. And that's it for the potatoes. So let's see who needs a little bit more. Mine there. I said an inch and a quarter is a good headspace. 
for the solids particularly and these with the beef. These are fine as well. Okay, add an inch and a quarter. All right, potatoes are done. Okay, let's get our seasonings in the chicken corn chowder. I need half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Let's see, that's a half a teaspoon. One, two, as always, make sure that that is non-iodized salt. I normally use Redmond's real salt, but I'm running really low. I need to get under the basement. So this is just sea salt from uh, Costco. And pepper, quarter teaspoon of each. Okay, now let's move on to the two Chipotle versions. These are really fun. Okay, this is gonna be Chipotle chicken. This is gonna be Chipotle beef. We're gonna start with the bell peppers. We're gonna do half a cup uh, in each. We're actually just gonna divide them, so maybe that'll be easier. Find a half cup scoop. Starts to get pretty already, doesn't it? Okay, half cup. If anything ends up a little light, you know, based on how I cut it this time versus the other times or how you cut it or whatever, I do have a little bit of extra chopped up of both the onions and the bell peppers. a lot of bell peppers on my floor down by my feet at the moment. Okay. I'm going to go with this. If we need any more at the end, we'll add them. Now let's do onions. I'm going to need a quarter cup of onions in each of these. You can hear it, but Izzy's in the chair over there snoring. <laughs> I'm just going to divide these up among the jars that need them. tablespoon of corn in each of these. I'm going to be a little shy of my corn. Must have gone overboard on one of them. Let me grab some more. All right, I'm just going to divide this little extra corn here. Get our tomatoes in. I need two tablespoons in each jar. I'm a little shy on tomatoes, so I think what I'll do is just divvy these up. I think I probably went a little overboard on this one. Or maybe that one. Okay, good enough for me. All right, now let's get our seasonings into all of these. We're going to start with salt. And I need half a teaspoon of salt in each of the ones we just did. And a 
quarter teaspoon of pepper in each of those. Where's my, oh, oh, where's my pepper? Here it is. Oh, you know what we forgot? We forgot the jalapenos. We need to get those in. Let's do one tablespoon of jalapenos in each of these four jars. See, this is why you lay everything out. <laughs> Would want to forget the jalapeno in this one for sure. All right, garlic powder. Quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. And a quarter teaspoon of cumin. Missed with most of that one. And a quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika. All right, let's get our chipotles and adobo in there now. I'm going to use one teaspoon in each of these jars. Like I said, you can use anywhere from half a teaspoon to two teaspoons. Two teaspoons would probably be David's preference, but it's not mine. <laughs> and I have to be able to eat it too. So I'm going to go with one teaspoon. You ought to put some, even if it's just half a teaspoon in there. So good. I can see where I have some cumin on this jar here. And it looks like I have some chipotle and adobo on that jar there. So we'll go ahead and clean those up. Although we'll do another good clean. Where's my towel? All right, let me see what I have. Anything that looks like I need a little Less headspace. I think we're good. I think we're really good. Okay, now we're gonna add, let's do the chicken first. So that'll be these four. It ends up being about half a cup of chicken broth in each of these four jars. This one will probably be a little bit more because it's not as full. But so I plan on about two and a half cups of chicken broth. We'll definitely debubble this and then level off anything with the chicken broth that we need to. So we're going for about an inch and a quarter headspace on these. Oops. All right, let's debubble. Okay, headspace on this one is good. If just a tiny bit full. This one's good. This one needs some more liquid. 
All right, let's get the beef broth into these jars. Now this is where we're gonna be really careful about our headspace, and we're gonna give it a much wider berth, if you will. So I want about an inch and a half of headspace in these with the liquid. You could even go a generous inch and a half with the liquid because remember that meat is going to create a lot of juice of its own. And if you use the chuck roast, you definitely give it a generous inch and a, inch and a half because it's gonna produce uh, the fat as well. All right, this is not the best pouring vessel, but let's try it. Let's debubble and see where we end up. That is about an inch and a quarter right there. That one's fine. This one could use a smidge more broth. Where did I put it? This one also needs some more broth. This one needs some more. Fortunately, I have more of that as well. All right, I'm not gonna go above that. This one actually in the front worries me a little bit. Okay, I got a little bit out of that one. That's much better. This one I think is good. Okay, let's get these cleaned up because I made a heck of a mess. All right, let's do a really thorough job cleaning these up. All kinds of little bits in there that could have gotten on the edge. just kind of a mess right inside. Let's clean that up inside too. All right, before we put these lids on, let's take a real close look at our headspace in these. I have maybe an inch of a quarter headspace with the potatoes, but an inch and a half headspace with the liquid. That should keep us safe. Again, this is way packed with stuff, but that's the way we want it. So about an inch and a quarter with, with food, with good stuff. And down here, it's an inch and a half or so with the broth. These, I've given them a good inch and a quarter head space. And same thing here, inch and a quarter head space. All right, let's get our, our lids on. So at the end of today, you're gonna be able to say you have chicken corn chowder, chipotle chicken soup, chipotle beef soup, and beef stew on the shelf. I just, I love the idea of the sampler because it gives you so many things to choose from immediately. And then you can decide what you like. It's kind of like 
going on a cruise or something where you get, you know, six hours in any given city. And then at some later date for some big anniversary or whatever, you could pick where you want to spend more time. So this is my cruise version, I guess, of soups here. All right, let's get these on. I'm going to do them in the Presto Electric canner, which holds, conveniently enough, eight regular mouth pints. So I thought that would be perfect. We'll do that today. Pretty. All right, let's get them into the canner. They're going to go for 75 minutes. So the electric pressure canner is really going to do all the work for me. But if you're using a stove top, you're going to put them into a cold canner. This is cold. I could have done hot broth going in, but with all this cold food, it would not have made a difference. It would still be room temperature by the time I got it into the canner. So my water is just room temperature. And then I'm going to let it heat up slowly. And when it's ready to go, we'll let it vent for 10 minutes. And then we'll set the timer for 75 minutes and then give it plenty of time to cool down. You don't want to rush, you don't want to rush anything ever actually coming out of a pressure canner. But you don't certainly don't want to rush anything with liquid in it coming out of a pressure canner because that's when you'll get the seepage. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get these into I missed a ring. What happened? I'm gonna get these into the canner as soon as I get all the rings on. And we're going to let them go for 75 minutes in the pressure canner, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the end results. All right, it's the moment of truth. The canner is done. So let's see if we had any siphoning. Hopefully we were very diligent on our headspace. Yikes. I always get a facial when I open this. Okay. No siphoning. I'll bring you over here. It won't be pretty, but here we go. Can you see? Water is pretty darn clean. All right, let's take these out and we'll see. I don't have everything sealed yet, but it just finished. So I'm sure that'll come. This one is sealed. Okay, that is a um, chicken corn chowder. Lighting is terrible. I'm sorry, it's evening time. But that one looks good. Oh, I just heard another one seal. That's another chicken corn chowder. This one, you know, some of these with the beef and the chicken, you have to be able to turn them upside down to tell what they are. That one is chicken. I can see the chicken on the side. So that is a Chipotle chicken. Lots more sealing in here. That is a Chipotle beef. All these vegetables will drop down as it cools and stops bubbling. I don't know what that one is. I think that one may be a Chipotle chicken. It is sealed. Nope, I'm saying based on the color of the broth, that one was a Chipotle beef. Here's a beef stew. That one has sealed. And this should be the final beef stew. Okay, so there's no discoloration. No leakage of any kind in that water. So as long as you get your headspace right, even with a very fatty meat like the chuck roast, you'll be okay. But headspace is key. All eight jars have sealed. We are done. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you give the soup sampler a try. I think it's really fun to have options on the shelf. Yes, you may decide that there are one or two you like better than the others. Go do those next. But at least now somebody in your family may like something different than what you like. And these are great. You know, when I was 
working in an office, I would have four or five, well, let's see, this was years before I was canning, so I would have four or five cans of soup, but it would be Campbell's Chunky Soup or Progresso or something like that. And I just had a microwavable dish. And so if I ever didn't have time to go out for lunch, had forgotten to pack my lunch, was running late, whatever, I could always make a bowl of soup at the office. So if you go to an office, your husband goes to an office, your wife goes to an office, it's a great thing to keep some of these in the desk with a microwavable bowl and lunch is done. So thank you so much for being here. I am thrilled to have you and I hope you give these a try. And if you like this idea of the soup sampler, let me know because I do have an idea for soup sampler number two. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.